All right, let's do this thing. Hello, welcome back, fellow entrepreneurs. I just wanted to make this very quick tutorial video on the geolocation app and how to actually use the geolocation app in your Shopify store. This app kind of looks like this, and if you have a Shopify store or stores like I do, you are probably using this app, and you're probably familiar with this app that is, as it is a made and developed by Shopify app. It is free and it is located within the app store. However, I realized when I was using this app and verifying what I was thinking with these reviews on the app store, there's a lot of misconceptions about what this app is actually supposed to do and how it's actually supposed to work. So I verified this information with my experience and reading into it a little bit, and I thought I would just make this quick tutorial video to clear the air when using this app because you should be using this app if you are selling in multiple markets on your Shopify store, but we wanna understand actually what this app does and what it's supposed to do. So we start by going to the Shopify app store and we can type in geolocation. Once the page results load, we are presented with a bunch of apps, most of these third-party apps for currency and language translation. If you wanna find out how you can find the best Shopify made apps, I did a video linked here on choosing the best Shopify made apps, choosing the best third-party apps, and what you can expect if you use a Shopify made and developed app compared to a third-party app. Also on the page, you'll see this built for Shopify badge. If you wanna know what the built for Shopify badge is, it's a new feature brought to the App Store this past summer. Did a whole video on that explaining what the built for Shopify badge is and how it helps entrepreneurs. You can also watch this video here. But if we take a look inside the geolocation app, we can see essentially what it does. Essentially, first off, when you ever load a website and it presents you with a menu that seems to know your location from where you're browsing from and presents you with options like redirecting you to the Canadian site in this example or shopping in the local currency, which is Canadian dollars in this example and getting shipping options for Canada, this is what the geolocation app can do. It detects your location of the customer browsing your website by their IP address. Then it corresponds this IP address with the markets you have set in your Shopify settings. You know, if you go to your settings, there's markets and displays all the markets that you have set up to sell your product. It corresponds the market with the country that the customer is browsing from and switches the currency, the shipping options based on the market setting. You'll log on to the site, everyday looks, and it'll present you with the location, the local currency for the customer, the shipping options for that customer, and the language for that customer, okay? Currency, shipping, language of the market that you set in your settings. Important to note from these screenshots is that a customer can click the X of this notification and that has significant effects if they click this X and I'll explain that in a moment. Or they also have this option to change the shipping country, which is also important and I'll explain that in a moment. But most likely people will push the X or they'll just hit shop now. This is just showing you really quickly what it looks like when you install it. Again, if you have a Shopify store, you're already most likely using this if you're selling in multiple markets. But if you're not, it uh, essentially looks like this. And then you have the selector of the country and the currency and the language and the footer of your store. And then you can also customize the message so that is it is on brand with your theme and your color scheme and your sh brand story. This is essentially what it looks like at the bottom of your store. It seamlessly just kind of integrates into your store with these two selectors. So you can select the region, which is corresponds to the currency. And then you can also select the language so that it translates most of the, the website, not all of it, but most of it to the language select. Now, this is where things get a little tricky. Some people think that this app should display this message every time a customer logs on. This is not what the app does. So the first misconception of this app is that this banner should display every time. This is not what this app will do. There are many situations, in fact, that this banner will not show up. It's not that the app is not working or it's not broken or you have to uninstall it or uninstall it or try to troubleshoot why the app is broken. That's actually what the app is designed to do. We get a better explanation of what the app does. Most importantly in this, I want to draw your attention to this paragraph right here. Remember how we said that the customer can click the X here? This has big ramifications if they click this X. What the app will do is if a customer accepts or dismisses a recommendation for a different country or region, they aren't presented with another recommendation on your store for 14 days. This means if the recommendation pops up, we notice you're in Canada shopping Canadian, look at Canadian languages and look at Canadian shipping options. If a customer clicks this X to get to the site, no matter if that's right or wrong, and then they reload the site, 
they will not see a pop-up for the next 14 days. It says if a customer clears the, the cookies and resets, then this will also reset. But this is why notification won't display every single time. Secondly, most important to note is that you can go to the app store and install this app at any time. However, if you don't use Shopify payments as your payment gateway, or you don't sell in multiple countries using your markets, remember I was telling you about the market settings? So if you don't use Shopify payments and you don't have multiple markets, then the app will have limited functionality. And so this opens the conversation that if you aren't using Shopify payments that you might have to look into using one of these third party localization, geolocation uh, recognizers or translating apps. Lastly, I just want to clarify one more thing when it comes to these selectors, especially the currency selector at the bottom of the page, this isn't a way for customers to choose a currency they want to pay in. This is just a way for people to be displayed their currency and their shipping options and their language based on where they are to make the customer experience better. So a customer won't be able to log in from the United States, for example, have US dollars that they want to pay with and select the currency converter for a currency where the US dollar does really well against, thereby allowing the customer to purchase the product at a much lower rate. Now, even if the customer has a different currency selected, once they go to the checkout and they input their billing address, this will revert to that billing address. So that's how you use this app properly. Again, it's a free made and developed Shopify app. So it's not a third party app that displays currency, language, and shipping options based on the customer's IP address. And the app isn't broken or malfunctioning if it's not appearing every time. Depending on the IP address, it might not show every single time. Also important to note that if a customer is browsing the website over and over again from different devices that are connected to the same Wi-Fi or internet connection with the same IP address, it is possible that this won't display again and again for them, especially if you don't have customer accounts where they log in. So this is why this X right here, based on this recommendation, is very important. And also remember, if you're not using Shopify payments as your current payment gateway, and you're not selling in multiple countries using markets, you can experience and will experience reduced functionality. That was kind of the main issues going on with my stores. It took me a while to figure all this out. So hopefully this quick YouTube video helps you guys. If it's helped you in any way, leave a like. So I know I just like helping people on this channel. I just like helping entrepreneurs because I've run Shopify stores for quite a while. So I suppose you can call me somewhat of an expert, but I know how difficult it is to start your business and how overwhelming it can be when things start not performing the way they are expected. So hopefully I saved you some time and some stress with this video. And if you wanna join a community of fellow entrepreneurs so you don't have to do everything by yourself, consider subscribing. And if you do, I'll see you in the next video.